going to proceed to assemble this M162LCR meter. It cost around $60 from Ali, and it purports to be an LCR meter with 1% accuracy. It has provisions for four wire uh, external connections as a guard. I ordered a kit with an enclosure. Now this is clear plastic, it's covered with a protective coating. The kit comes with a display already mounted on a custom-made board. This is not part of the kit. Uh, this is a circuit board. has some surface mount components on it already. A USB cable and a cast of characters they include all kinds of things an inductor, a couple of resistors, and a capacitor either to demonstrate it works or calibrate it, I'm not sure and in order to install these little phosphor bronze connection devices they provided a, a jig to hold them in place while you solder them. So the first thing it tells us to do is to power up this board by itself as it is right now. And I assume that means with these switches in that position doesn't really say and verify that this actually works. Now it tells you in the instructions that what, it, what appears here doesn't matter. That is the numbers and stuff are random. but it did power up and does display some information. It's interesting they call this the main board and I guess it's not. Also I don't know what the switches on the bottom here do. They're marked off and program and I have them off right now. Then it tells us to mount some strip sockets here, here, and here. Well, one of them is obvious. That's that. I guess there's one there. And one here. So I rearrange things and proceed to do that. I'm going to use a pretty fine diameter, finer than I usually use. So this is uh, 15 thousandths. It's uh, lead solder, 63%. I'm just going to solder one hole and then look at this to see if it's straight and it's not. So that looks like it's at right angles to the board. If I had soldered more than one, I would have had to, a bigger problem straightening it.
I'm going to support it on this. So this arrangement will work until I can solder one of the two terminals. Now, see, it looks a little cattywampus there, and it's not quite vertical. But I can take care of that. So that's fairly straight and vertical. Do the other pin. Repeat, the second socket fits down here. Uh, this doesn't look like a good idea. I think we'll have to change directions here. This is marketed by JYE Tech. And it's like it's an orphan. It was released earlier this year, or late last year. JYE Tech mentions it on their website, but has no documentation. Uh, there is a JYE Tech discussion group. It's closed for this device. It's open for the rest of the devices. It's that's marketed by these people. But the discussion group for this one is closed. And the Google search turned up this, which shows this mounting tool being used here. Well, doesn't fit. I don't think it fits. They show it being used, first of all, in this picture, they show pins sticking up rather than sockets. But the step number two clearly shows what I have begun to do. Here's the pins for that. And here are four pins for two. So I guess I'll have to break these apart. So if I did put in pins instead of sockets, Still doesn't fit. So see how this jig is to work. The problem is I can't use this jig if either of these pins or sockets are installed. It clears the holes, but it won't clear the body of either the uh, socket. See that? If I move from here to here, I try to put this jig in. It 
it hits that. I can't force it in because of this. So, the instructions don't mention the use of this. This also shows that these pins are sticking up. So, they would have us install this instead of this. Doesn't make any difference. I'm going to have to remove what I've installed here and install these six pieces of spring phosphor. Then I can go back and install that stuff. So let me go off camera and remove that socket. And as I say, it wouldn't have mattered if I had used the header instead. It still interferes with the jig. <laughs>